time it is. It's time for a video. Let's go. Hello, everyone. Commander Devin Lionheart here. I am live. I'm not live, but I am recording a video. As of today, today is September 25th. Now, for us Americans, in September 26th, at the end of this day, Rockman X Dive will not be accessible for the U.S. anymore past 12 o'clock in the morning. So I want to do these videos as soon as possible, multiple recordings. So first things first, I want to explain what's going on here. X Dive Online is going offline by 12 o'clock tonight, fans, or in the morning. Even for our people here in the U.S. And I want to make three unique videos honoring this overall game. Number one is the characters. Number two, we're going to go for the weapons. And number three, the cards. As we're going to go over some of my favorite cards, characters, and weapons in the game. Finally, I want to make these videos as short as possible. Because there is a lot to go over as... This is my current library of all my characters. So first off, we're going to have one blue, three purples, and overall four golds. Now the blues are obviously B rank. The purples are A rank, and this is S rank. So with the characters, Let's start off with my favorite number one A rank that has literally gotten me through some toughest times, the Serve Bot. Oh boy, where can I start with this little nuisance when he was first introduced? In the game, when he was first introduced, everybody was excited of playing the little Serve Bot due to his skills of getting a barrier er, and healing himself at rank. Five. This skill right here, enjoying the curry, enjoys a delicious curry, restores your hip, and then gives you a protected shield from damage. But even more so, you can literally bop people with a huge overall giant serve bot with a Pico Pico hammer. If you don't know what a Pico Pico hammer is in the United States, let alone most part of the world, I blame Aim obviously political leaders for removing or political uh, pro uh, p the people in front of products for removing such a toy from the market as it's a harmless toy for children just to go bop bop and the servant bot does that while moving forward and doing a lot of damage and as you can see with the A ranks I have all their DNA unlocked. Now we're moving on to B ranks. My top three favorite B ranks. Obviously, at number nine, we have Thunder Mega Man. When Thunder Beam Mega Man was introduced, or Thunder Mega Man as I like to call him, this character was an absolute terror to deal with, not only on missions, not only that on PvE, Player versus player, but, well, not PvE, but player versus player, and also the j -Cup. This th This character can literally get you through endless amounts of the Jacob Project Tower with no fail. This is why he's at number 9. Thunder Mega Man is literally a field wiper, and for good reasons, for multiple occasions. At number... Eight. We're gonna go with obviously this guy, Rising Fire X from Mega Man X Four. Now this guy was given a figurine by uh, what was the business game? Oh yeah, Kotobuki's overall model kits, and I still do not have this figurine. I currently have the High Max armor and the Zero armor. Z Mega Man, well Zero. Oh, from Mega Man X3 and the High Max Armor model kits. Maybe one day I'll put those together on a live stream for y'all. But until then, this is Rising Fire X. In PVE, yet again, 
He's a beast in combat. With the overall just amount of damage you're able to deal, deal with a fire or charge shot going forward, leaving flames behind. But the literally rising fire, aka Dragon Fist, aka Ken Masters, sure you can was also something to be feared as it left a residual trail of fire. And when you get the DNA code unlocked, you get something very unique. As it seems, the flame wave, or the flame's charge shot, gets a additional shot. Uh, where is that? Um, yeah, maybe I was wrong on that. Maybe I'm right. Who knows? But uh, we're moving on to the next character as my top number one favorite, when he was introduced, shook up everything in the game. We're talking about Mega Man Volnut, or for us dubbers, Mega Man Legends. Now, what makes him such a beast in, like, missions and combat? One, the smash mine grenade, right here, skill number two. When you throw it, it leaves a residual blast effect behind that hits multiple times. But the shining laser is really, really, truly shines as he fires, as promised, a literal shining laser going forward and just hurting everyone that comes in contact. It doesn't matter if you end up in the beam's laser, you will know what the shining laser can truly do. Now, the dive armors are an honorable mention, because each and every one of them are powerful on their own, and they are iconic original creations, so we'll just go over their animations without explanation. Next, dive armor X. We got dive armor Rico. Gotta love this version of Rico, because god dang, when she was introduced, she was really powerful. But she's now more than mediocre. Top tier waifu bait here. Dive Armor Iris. Due to this game's cancellation, this character will always be the most overpowered dive fest armor in the game. It's number one in the honorable mentions. Then you got Dive Cross Mega Man. This is literally Mega Man EXE with Dive Armor. When he was first introduced, for a long time, he was one of the true terrors in the game as a dive armor. Uh, next, we're going to go to dive armor Axel. When he was introduced, he was the third dive armor character. He can literally blow everyone off the field and out of the water with his barrage of bullets. And his laser, when he throws, he shoots after he throws the big giant A on his back is an honorable mention. Dive Armor Zero. As a sword type character, Dive Armor Zero really burns everything he comes in contact with. And he is like obviously a honorable mention because he is a dive armor. Last dive armor I'm gonna go over as soon as I can find it for crying out loud. I got so many S rank characters, but not all of them. Ah, here we are. So, Dive Armor X, the last Dive Armor on the list. And, oh, I forgot Ica, uh, Rico. Okay, so we'll go to her in a minute. But, Dive Armor X, for the longest time, was the top tier Dive Armor until oh, uh, Dive Armor Next X came out, or X came out. And this was the fourth Dive Armor we got, Dive Armor Rico. She was the waifu bait at first for the first dive armor, and everybody loved her. But her skills are so mediocre, even if you get her DNA fully unlocked, she still suffers from that of, obviously, battle combat. Now, with the dive armors out of the way, as honorable mentions, let's get down to the actual six characters that I enjoy a lot. So, first off, I want to talk about a very special character at number six, is Halloween Zero. Now, when I got him, I was so happy because, like, this guy, he is the literal epitome of a vampiric Zero. 
as every attack has the capability of draining the enemy's hip. Rather, it be player versus player, missions, Jacob Project. If the bats hit you, your opponent's not only going to lose more hip, you're going to gain what they lost. Sadly, we will never be able to live up to the PvE hype this man has left behind, or this Maverick Hunter. Next, I want to point out my second, my number five pick. Now, everybody's aware of the Living JoJo meme that I made on my Twitter account that Gangster Boy Sigma is literally that of Joseph Jotaro. And I freaking love this guy, but what I love even more than I recently got a hold of before the game's cancellation is this little girl, the Gangsta Girl, Abrota. Now, this is obviously a reference to Japanese culture as the overall Tom girl of the Gangster Wars, the Gangster Girl, Etora. This is the big titty maverick mama of the game, just as a Gangster Girl. And she is gorgeous. Take a look at that body. Take a look at this design, this character development. This is a beautiful character, a reference to JoJo itself, let alone Japanese culture as blonde Gyarus and gangsters. This is at number five. Now, I'm going to bring up my favorite bathing suit is the first Iris I ever got. That's right. We're going for bathing suit Iris. Eh, where is she? 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 Where is she go? Where is she go? So, this is the first character I unlocked the DNA to, and the first Iris I got. And even that, of the first alternate skin, is the blue skin I ever got, because it just cost me 200 medals to unlock. I freaking love this. As a mission character, she's good. Jacob Project, okay, PvE, she's horrendous at. She's not good for player versus player, but everything else, she's okay and good with. And if anything, the shield she gets doesn't last long, but who cares? When you got a reploid girl that looks this good, good lord, step aside, ladies. This is pure just beauty on the beach, and I will fully always believe that. Now, my favorite second festive character, a lot of people would probably think, oh, Maybe it's Valentine's Day's Iris? No. Holiday Leviathan? No. Marno? Eh, try again, but maybe a lot of Halloween like ale? <laughs> oh, you simple simpletons. And you think it's the palette? No. Or Holiday Roll? It is New Year's Eve Iris. This is an Iris that I seriously underestimated when she came out. But when I got her, her paralyzing arrows definitely live up to their mark as they paralyze the opponent. And then you can just go up with the second skill and hit them with the rising sun that is the New Year's Dawn. It heals you for a huge amount of hip, gives you that of an ability called Renewal that literally just gives you enhancements, but most importantly, it damages the enemy, as long as they're in the glistening sun underneath the shrine gate. She's underestimated for me and a lot of people. And for the first time, when I ever received higher than A rank 1, she was responsible of getting me in any type of S rank. And it was SG2 at the highest that I have achieved in this game with her. Now we're moving on to number two, my fa second favorite character, as she is the third. My second favorite character is the character that took me the hardest time to get a hold of, Ultimate Armor X. Now, little backstory on this character. When, I, when it was first introduced, I spent over $200 of trying to pull him during the first Die Fest banner, and I got the Buster, the Gravity Pulse, three freaking times. Once from a 10 pull, and two times from single pulls. Throughout 
the entire history of the game until the overall free pulls came out during the game's cancellation. I got the ultimate armor. But before then, I got the skin, hoping the skin would unlock the character. It did not. It did not, and I hated that I made that misconception or mistake. Now we're going on to number one of my favorite characters, a highly original character, beautiful beauty and perfection, and ruthless aggression incarnate. Iris, another, the top tier original character of the game in design of overall characteristics and personality. This is what happens when Colonel and Iris's cores perfectly merge with that of the event that you have to collect several chips for the emergence to happen. Now, due to this, uh, at first I thought it was the perfect emergence. No, and as a matter of fact, I thought because the X4, the Sigma virus, took over the overall soul core of Colonel, but I forgot years ago that Colonel had the ability to resist the Sigma virus. So, and to this, Revo Reploid, gotta love the guy, he knows his stuff, and I forgot that when Iris and Colonel's cores mixed, the way they did, and she got the armor, was the natural power-up ability, but this is caused by Divine Intervention by X-Dive and Capcom, making Iris perfectly merged with Colonel with added program and parts you find on a Pacific level. So, yes, that's how they became perfectly one. This beautiful, I would have to say, a lot of people would compare her to a teen, but I think this is Iris in her adult form, with her and Colonel put together perfectly as one. She's number one, because I'm not going to lie, Her looks can kill, her thighs can save lives, and her booba can end you up. This has been my top 10 with honorable mentions, all the dive armors of my favorite characters in X Dive. I gotta move on to the next recording, as it's going to be weapons and then cards, and y'all can expect these uploads to happen. In the middle of the night, starting from September 27th to September 30th. Please, overall, everyone, support me. Like and share this. And overall, just like, let's honor the loss that is Mega Man and X Dive Online as it will never be coming back. And it is a true sad time. I have been Commander Devin Lionheart. I am Audi. Later, everyone. Sale, so, stop the recording. Start the new one. Hey, why are y'all still here? The, the the show's over. The video's the video's done. Oh wait a minute, you want more? Well, why don't you click up to the upper right here and like. See one of my live streams. Or maybe the lower left. Check one of the videos over there. Or maybe just subscribe, you know? I appreciate it. The show's over. Go grab a snack. <laughs>